I have my chip. Will it work? It came on a nice piece of um, static dissipative cardboard. That's always a good start. But it does appear to have the same markings on it as our original. Like I said, this may or may not work. Um, if there's you know specific code in the chip, then we're done for. Uh, if not, who knows if it does its own fetch from the uh, EEPROM as a default um, behavior, we could be all right. And we notice that it is upside down, the dots in the top right. A little bit of conformal coating on there still, I think. All the pins seem to be nice and flat. Be a slight solder bump somewhere, it doesn't want to rest perfectly there, that should be alright. Always going to end up with a bit too much. Could do the old one pin at a time method, I suppose. It's a little bit quicker and cleaner. You have to go back and uh, suck up the excess <laughs> and she ended up doing that anyway <laughs> bridging it across don't know why I bother cleaning stuff up before I've proven it works I mean it's handy while the board's still warm but it's not like you can't heat it up later you know it's kind of a, a waste of alcohol and time if um, you find out that uh, she's dead anyway. What we're looking for is any activity on the EEPROM that might suggest that this thing is awake. Right, so I'm going to probe on, so you've got the two lines here as clock and data from memory. Connect the power and uh, connect our enable. Oh! You guys see that? Yeah, it's frozen my scope, but we have data. Let's try that one more time. Hey! <laughs> I'm going to call that a win. We didn't get that before. I mean, I'm not going to know if it works until I put it in the car, but... It's a good start. Really good start. Let's go to here. I think, wait, 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 let me see, you can see, can you see, you can see, there we go, I think these lines here were um, serial data, or was it this, it was either this line here that goes up and over to here, was it that pin, or was it uh, one of these, I think, because there's got to be some comms to our uh, audio uh, deck there so let's just try on here 
Oh, look at that. It's sending data. Yay. Cool. All right. She lives. I think she lives. That's that's awesome. I better order a bunch of these chips because I see a few of these amps. <laughs> Quick, get in before they're all gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say. I'm going to say we'll have to report back is what I'm going to say. Like I said, I haven't got the car. Unless it's running some obscure data from... Oh, it looked like a brand new chip. It hasn't been pulled from something else. The pins on it were, were clean. So... There we go, everyone. Well, that was pretty neat, I thought. Hopefully that gives you guys uh, a bit of a process that you can follow when trying to diagnose your problems um, that I will have to make a note of uh, those waveforms and stuff and what's going on um, just clean up the old thermal paste so we can put some new stuff down but um, yeah what's uh, we'll have to make note of those waveforms and and what's going on uh, oh, it probably wouldn't hurt to take a couple of other measurements um, in different points there um, to get a feel for what a functioning unit should look like so uh, we know next time one comes in we can go well we know that's right we know that's right and that happens but this isn't happening so um, you can't you can't get a service manual or a schematic for these so you kind of just have to I guess make your own if you're seeing a lot of something just um yeah I'd say start making your own you know you might want to go down the pins of the amplifier ICs and um, make a note of what measurements you have on each one you know uh, you could even do like diode mode to ground uh, with positive on ground and um, get a feel for what what's a good reading um, so you might be able to identify a short inside a a chip that you might not know about otherwise because um, yeah you never know um, unless I suppose unless the board if, if you take a chip off and the, and the board connection is not shorted then it's um, it's it's inside the chip I never use this stuff often enough and quite often there's a there's a clear liquid um, mixed in with the paste um, I guess keeps it fluid and it quite often separates, so you get a lot of that come out the end first, which is quite annoying. So you just pump it back and forwards a few times and try and mix it in, but yeah, it's not always perfect. I don't know why they tend to overkill what they put on, so you end up with it hanging out the sides. And I mean, not that it's a huge issue, but you sort of wonder they could save on manufacture if they didn't put so much on, I guess. And the problem is, the first squeeze is usually quite watery. But um, if it's too watery, you're just going to have to purge it, I suppose. And I don't think we need to reconform or coat where we worked on, to be honest. It's precautionary, but there's lives inside the vehicle, and they're pretty dry environments that I've... I mean, if it was under the bonnet, you know, or somewhere uh, out in the environment, you might want to, but... Um, Yeah, not necessary. <laughs> so, we have a dead chip. Interesting that we'll just fall over and die, but... Uh, and it's as easy as that. You know, with a basic scope and just reading of data sheets, you can fix anything. You really can. You make an educated guess, you know, you can like we did. We thought, hey, you know, this chip should be should be having some data with the EEPROM, some communications with the EEPROM. Um... You know, take a punt, order the chip, see nothing happening, so... And when you've got no other info to go on, you kind of have to. Um, other than the fact that, like I think I mentioned, um, in previous units, I saw a data flow there. So I like it. It's good when manufacturers don't have proprietary code in their ICs, and they just use a default um, uh, EEPROM for booting up and uh, 
it's, it's really cool. It makes for easy manufacture, I suppose, because if you have to program you know, hundreds of thousands of EPROMs, although you can get them manufactured pre-programmed, but, you know, it's another expense, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know how you get on if you end up having to fix one of these. Um, be interesting to know what all the common faults are. Like I said, this is the third one I've looked at now. So, yeah, if I if I find a, if I get another one, we'll do another video. Maybe find a different fault and um, yeah, build a, a a list of info on these. But um, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and catch you next time. And I'll uh, report back when I hear if it actually does work, but I'm pretty confident.